We'll start with the uh, Imedi TV, first row. Yeah. Next. Uh, Georgian TV company, TV Imedi, Guram Rogava. A few days ago, uh, Russia uh, started move lines of uh, uh, demarcation on Georgian's conflict uh, region. In order to move the occupation line, uh, Russian militaries are making uh, uh, installation of uh, barbed wires and uh, pillars of the Tsinwalda region. And today, uh, Deputy Secretary of uh, Russian Secreta uh, Security Council, Rashid Nurgalaev, today said that uh, in near future, in uh, this region, Russia will build 200 small houses. It is a, a problem for people who live in this area. Uh, I was there a few days ago before I came here. I was uh, talked to with these people and they are, they are afraid that uh, they will lose uh, their houses. And uh, this is the main problem for them. Can I ask you, uh, what's your position about uh, these facts? Let me be very clear. Um, building such fences is a violation of international law and of the 2008 uh, agreements. Um, building fences impedes uh, freedom of movement. It can further inflame tensions. It is simply not acceptable. And uh, we urge uh, Russia uh, to live up uh, to her international obligations. Radio Free Europe, right next to that. Kobali Klikadze, Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty Georgian Service. Mr. Secretary General, can I ask you about recent developments in Georgia? I mean, prosecution of political rivals, political opponents in Georgia. Specifically, you know that a few weeks ago, former Prime Minister of Georgia, Vano Mirabishvili, is jailed and charged uh, because of abuse of power, embezzlement, and fraud of votes. To her perception, I remember your sharp critic in November uh, NATO Parliamentary Assembly in Prague, I was there, that it's a, it's a kind of resembles Ukraine, that it's a politically motivated uh, prosecution of political opponents in Georgia. Thank you very much. We are following these um, uh, developments with great concern. Uh, obviously, we are not going to interfere with uh, legal cases and uh, the judiciary uh, in uh, Georgia. In today's meeting uh, with the Georgian uh, Minister of Defense, I made clear and uh, ministers uh, made uh, clear uh, that we take it for granted uh, that uh, the Georgian authorities will fully respect the fundamental principles of uh, rule and of law and will guarantee a due process. We have made clear that even the perception, even the perception of politically uh, motivated um, arrests uh, should be uh, avoided. Uh, and um, um, we expect uh, Georgia uh, to live up to those fundamental principles. We'll go over here. Uh, Tolo TV. Uh, <coughs> good afternoon, Mr. Secretary. Daoud Sultan Zoy from Tolo TV of Afghanistan. The people of Afghanistan are worried about uh, two important things. One is, uh, of course, when the responsibilities of uh, combat responsibility of security is uh, handing over to Afghan forces. To them, this seems like a tanam it's tantamount to Afghanization of a global war that they feel. Uh, both victim and foot soldiers of that war. On the other hand, they're also worried that uh, they're also a victim of, of uh, things that you mentioned yesterday about governance, rule of law, and worried about an election that is upcoming and that the international community has not been able to keep the Afghan government uh, accountable to. So both are worrying them. Uh, on the first uh, issue, <clears throat> uh, security, um, as I said in my introduction, let me assure you that Afghanistan will not uh, stand alone. Uh, we will still be there uh, to train, advise, assist the Afghan security forces. And the whole point is that uh, we have spent time and efforts 
in collaboration with the Afghan authorities, to build a very strong and very capable Afghan security force. Um, in today's meeting, uh, Komaisaf could refer to examples as to how professionally uh, Afghan security forces uh, have dealt uh, with uh, security challenges uh, in Afghanistan. So we see an increasing capability. In other words, I feel confident that by the end of 2014, um, uh, the Afghan security forces will be able uh, to um, take full responsibility for the security uh, and provide uh, that secure environment for the Afghan people that is essential um, uh, for further economic and social development uh, in Afghanistan, which leads me to the second part uh, of, of your question. Obviously, security is only one side of the coin. Another equally important side uh, is governance. It is to build trust between the Afghan people and the Afghan government. And to build that trust, we need a reinforced fight against corruption, against um, drugs production and drugs trade. Uh, we need um, to see human rights, including, of course, women's rights, fully respected. All these elements are essential uh, if we are to ensure long-term peace and stability uh, in Afghanistan. I have discussed these uh, matters uh, with President Karzai uh, on several occasions and, and made clear that commitment is a two-way street. The international, uh, international community has committed itself to continue assisting Afghanistan. But on the other hand, we also expect from the Afghan government to live up uh, to the international obligations, uh, including um, uh, uh, full respect uh, for basic democratic uh, principles and uh, human rights. Um, and I feel confident uh, that um, uh, the Afghan political leadership um, um, stays committed uh, to pursuing uh, that path. So all in all, I'm quite optimistic uh, about uh, the future uh, of Afghanistan. And let me, just to conclude that, uh, tell you that I had a very encouraging uh, experience last time I visited Kabul. I met with a group of uh, young uh, leaders uh, from all walks of life, um, men and women, and these young leaders uh, were very optimistic about the future of uh, their uh, country. And first and foremost, they made the case that um, the young generation in Afghanistan uh, has experienced what freedom can bring. Uh, and uh, they don't want uh, to return uh, to the darkness uh, of uh, the past. And I think this might eventually be the strongest force at all, because freedom is the strongest force in the world, uh, and it will prevail also in Afghanistan. Uh, about elections, um, I think a lot of lessons were learned uh, after the last uh, elections and I feel confident um, that uh, the Afghan authorities uh, will ensure uh, free, fair, transparent uh, elections this time. Let me stress that the conduct of the elections is primarily, uh, or it is solely, I would say, uh, an Afghan responsibility. And to ensure a secure environment is the responsibility of the Afghan security forces. We are there also in 2014 to assist the Afghan security forces if needed, but pri primarily security is a responsibility for the Afghan security forces. Kabul News TV. Uh, thank you. Jilani Zwak from Kabul News Afghanistan. 
Uh, if uh, Afghanistan and the U.S. couldn't reach on bilateral security agreement, will it affect the NATO new mission in Afghanistan after 2014? Uh, bilateral U.S.-Afghan uh, security, security agreement. agreement. Um, oh, yes, indeed. Uh, it's, it's essential uh, to uh, reach an agreement uh, of such um, a security arrangement. First of all, let me stress that um, after my conversations uh, with uh, President Karzai, I feel confident uh, that such an agreement uh, will be reached and a bilateral agreement between the US and Afghanistan will be followed uh, by an agreement uh, between uh, the Afghan government and NATO uh, on a status of forces um, agreement uh, that will provide the legal framework uh, for uh, our uh, presence uh, in um, uh, Afghanistan. Let me just add to that that I feel confident that we will reach an agreement because uh, the Afghan government is well aware of the fact that without, without such an, a security agreement, we can't deploy troops and trainers to Afghanistan. So it's a prerequisite for deploying our resolute support mission that we reach an agreement uh, on the status of forces. DPA. Yeah, detabling from DPA, the German press agency, Secretary General, a question about uh, the CONOP and the force protection uh, you will surely have discussed. Uh, we, I understand this will be a much smaller mission and it will be a training mission and it will be probably a training of the trainers mission, but this mission still needs to be protected. Who is going to protect them? Will they have to rely on the Afghan security forces only for their protection? Will there be some sort of a joint protection force, multinational protection force? Will everybody have to take care of his or her own protection? What is the concept that you have in this limited regional setup? First of all, let me stress that obviously uh, we will ensure uh, that uh, our trainers are well protected so that they can conduct their activities uh, in a secure uh, environment. Next, um, uh, it, it will, of course, be an integrated part uh, of the resolute support mission uh, that uh, we are able to protect our trainers ourselves. Having said that, the overall security um, will, of course, be secured in a collaboration uh, between uh, Afghan security forces who will be responsible for uh, security all over Afghanistan at that time, uh, in a collaboration between uh, Afghan security forces um, and um, our own um, resolute uh, support uh, mission. Uh, but of course, uh, we feel a responsibility ourselves uh, to ensure that our trainers uh, are uh, well protected and can exercise their activities uh, in uh, a secure uh, environment. Um, finally, all the details uh, will be worked out by our commanders uh, in the field. Uh, ministers didn't discuss uh, such military details uh, in today's uh, meeting. Uh, it will be for uh, the commanders in the field uh, to take the detailed decisions on how to best protect uh, our trainers. One last question in the center. Um, Chris Ostendor from the Dutch television. Are you confident that uh, you will have enough contributions of other countries for, to build the new mission and uh, connected to that, will a contribution of the Netherlands be appreciated? Um, yes, uh, to, to both uh, questions. Um, yes, I am... Um, I would appreciate uh, contributions uh, from all um, allies and partners uh, who want to uh, contribute uh, to the Resolute Support um, uh, training mission. And um, uh, the Netherlands um, has already a lot of experience uh, within uh, training activities. So I, I hope the Netherlands will be in a position to contribute to the Resolute Support um, uh, mission. The fact is uh, that all um, 28 allies um, agree uh, that the Resolute Support uh, mission um, um, 
should be a NATO-led mission. That decision has been made. It's, uh, as you know, decision taken by consensus. So all countries, including the Netherlands, support uh, a NATO-led uh, training uh, mission, which hopefully also will be followed by concrete contributions uh, to that uh, mission. And to, uh, as regards the first part of your question, yes, I feel confident um, that uh, our resolute support mission will be fully manned. Let me stress that so far we haven't decided the exact number uh, of uh, the future resolute support uh, mission. That decision will be taken uh, at, at a later uh, stage. We have some planning assumptions, and based on that, uh, I feel confident uh, that um, we will um, get enough contributions to ensure that the Resolute Support mission will be fully manned. Thank you very much. I'm afraid that's all we have time for.